So we had a question come in. Um, if we have a patient who comes into the emergency room with a puncture wound from a fish hook being embedded in their finger, do we build that with a CPT code or is it best used with an ENM code? So I actually went in and I looked at some of this and there was a website that I've quoted on here where I did get some information. But if you just Google it, you'd be surprised at how many questions are out there answered about a fish hook. So my one thing that I, my aunt has had a glass eye since she was about seven because her brother threw the fish hook back and caught her in the eye, which I just, I don't like dealing with those things, but it, it you know, a fish hook somewhere in your body um, actually happens pretty often, apparently. So one thing that we always have to look at is how it is documented. What does our documentation prove? So if it is not justifiable for a procedure or an e &M, even though one might have been done, we know they don't document very well sometimes. So we need to make sure it can be supported by that medical document documentation no matter which way you're going to bill. So if the documentation is medically necessary for a procedure in addition to an E&M, perhaps there was something else going on, um, maybe they slipped and fell and also fell on the fish hook. So now they've got a fish hook in their foot and possibly a, a sprained ankle or something like that. So we could possibly have multiple things going on. So we always want to make sure that that uh, medical documentation is stands to support whatever is done. So like I said, I found so many things about this. Um, the fish hook, they consider, of course, a foreign body. This is a foreign body now in your person. So a foreign body removal has many, many codes out there um, to support a procedure for a foreign body. Um, different procedures all dependent upon the body structure, all dependent upon where this foreign body is and how far this foreign body's in. You could have it in, you know, just looking down some of the codes, you go to the index of your CPT and you say removal, foreign body, uh, I think there's a column and a half or something of all different kinds of foreign body removals. It could be in the gum, muscle, eye, pharynx, toe, finger, you know, you got foreign bodies everywhere, of course. So they're all different codes depending upon the circumstances. But for the scenario we have, we can take a look and see what that would fall under. So we have two CPT codes in the integumentary system that would um, justify a foreign body removal of a fish hook. Um, so this would be CPT 10120 and 10121, incision and removal of a foreign body subcutaneous simple or complicated. So it depends on what kind of situation we're looking at. But the key word in both of that is incision. So a provider could back thread it maybe out of the finger. Well, they're not really doing an incision then. The, that would be justifiable by an ENM. But if we had to, um, if they had to cut it either with the fish hook itself could be used to cut through an incision, or if they had to use some kind of tool or instrument to um, in size or cut into the body part, then you're looking at an incision. So um, it depends on what's beneficial to the patient, what's less traumatic, maybe if you're dealing with a small child, um, what's less traumatic on them, and also looking at infections or other kind of complications that could come from that. So they, of course, make their medical judgment and depend upon what kind of, um, how they're going to take care of this foreign body. So if there's no incision, then we're going to look at an E&M. Now, remember with the, all E&M coding, so if we want to move down a little bit, you always got to make sure you meet those components, whether they're two or three, depending upon the place of service you have, depending upon um, a new or established or, you know, what kind of qualifications we have here. So you always want to make sure you have those components because um, like uh, um, 
they could think that it's going to go under procedure, but if it didn't meet that qualification, we got to make sure that they justified enough HPI, exam, and medical decision making. So um, things that we look at in the surgical section, it says, remember, these things are included with the procedure. Uh, if it's not separately identifiable, that ENM has to be separately identifiable for another reason or based upon that medical decision making process. Um, a local block or anesthetic, maybe they need to numb up the area perhaps, that's going to be part of our procedures. Um, immediate and typical post-operative care, those are included with our procedures. Writing orders, medication, things like that, those are part of it. So as this was in the finger, but there are foreign body codes um, indicating the rest of the body parts or also the depth of that foreign body. How deep is that foreign body? In this case, we're talking about a fish hook, but of course, there are other things that could go much deeper. When you talk about the deep or complicated foreign body removals, because some of the descriptions will say deep or some will say some kind of for, um, complication or complicated procedure, then those are described as including usually the fascia and or the muscle. So they're not superficial. They're, we're talking much more involved process here. And remember everything, I love to talk billing, everything is based upon relative value units. What is the amount of work that's going into that procedure? So of course, superficial, that's not a lot of work. Going down to the bone, that's a lot of work. So we need to make sure that that documentation justifies those procedure codes. Most of the information I've got originally about just this fish hook came from this um, Zotech Partners website. So, but then the rest, remember, we've got to make sure everything's documented properly. So it depends on what they did. If they did an incision, then you would have one of your simple or complicated 10120 codes or an ENM depends on how they removed that foreign body. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.